Hello, tonight I'm going to be doing a walkthrough for Apache.sh and how to install it and, and set up a domain with it for an SSL certificate. So, um, the domain I'm going to be working with is one called thesteelfarm.com, which I have that isn't really in use right now. So, I've got it set up here with just a basic single page so we can check it when it works um, currently not secure um, I'm doing this on a FreeBSD server so um, if you do this on Linux it will be somewhat different but the same I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the whole process manually rather than using any packages and that way the, the process is pretty much the same um, FreeBSD does have a port or package for Acme.sh but I've run into Linux um, systems that don't, at least not in the standard repositories, and so I've had to do the manual process there. So I'm just going to show that. Um, I'm not going to go through all the different possible ways you can use Acme.sh, like DNS verification and some other um, more obscure things. Um, I'm just going to use the, the standard methods that I use all the time, um, which keeps it pretty simple. So we've got our domain here, which just has a simple configuration. I'll come back to this line in a little bit. But other than that, it's just got my domain here with and without the www um, for just the insecure port 80. Um, the files are in user local www steel farm. We've got a couple of log files, and so we're good to go. Um, the first thing I generally do, or the first thing I always do, is I create an Acme user. Um, and that is because I just prefer to run it since it can be run as another user, not as root. I just do it that way. It makes things a little safer um, since if you run it as root, it does have access to everything. So um, you can put the home directory for the Acme user wherever you want. Um, the FreeBSD package, if you install that, puts it in VARDB Acme, and so I just do the same thing. But Home Acme would work fine, or somewhere else that you want to put it on the system. So we'll make that, and then we'll become Acme. Okay, so we don't have anything in here yet in Acme's home directory, so the first thing we need to do is get the Acme.sh package. So I'll come over here. This is the, Git, the GitHub repository for it. So we'll grab the URL for that, come back here. I always like to keep my Git stuff under a Git directory. So we'll go in there and Git clone it. And now we've got it here. First thing we need to do is run agme.sh install. What that does is just sets up this act this dot acme.sh directory for you with some basic stuff um, set up in it okay the next thing you need to do is run acme.sh and say register account dash m and then your email address whatever it might be i don't i've never had this I've never had it actually use this for anything i don't know exactly what it's for but it's just something you have to do before you can use Acme.sh to create certificates. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're actually ready to create a certificate, sort of. So this is how you would do it. You give your domains with dash Ds, and then you give your where it's going to do, save the files with dash W. Now, the way Acme.sh works, just a just a real quick um, description of it, is it connects out to the server that's going to make the certificate for you, and says, "Give me a token, which is going to be something, you know, just just some long random string, like that or something like that." It says, "Give me a token," and then when it gets the token back, it creates a file with that token in it, and then it tells the server okay you can come get that token from this file at this location and by doing that it proves that okay I am on the server that controls this domain I have control over this domain 
and so it's okay to give me the certificate for it. Um, you know, I, I have a right to have that certificate because I control the domain. And so it's, it's all, and that's kind of the whole point of this is to handle that process automatically. It used to be done with a lot of paperwork and crap. So, um, so we have to have a place that the Acme user can create the files. Now what I could do is I could say user local WW steel farm, that's where my files for the domain are, and then it would need and then it would try to create a directory under that called dot well known slash Acme Challenge and put the files in there that it's gonna tell the server here's where you can come get them from. Now the only problem with that is that the Acme user can't create anything in that directory because that's owned by somebody else. So there's a couple ways to get around that. Um, one way is you could go in there and you could make a well-known directory, which it looks like I already did that when I was trying this out before. Um, you could make a well-known directory and have it be owned by Acme and then make a Acme challenge directory within that because that's that's where it's going to want to put the files is wherever you tell it is the base for that site the base directory for that site with your dash w it's going to take that and then beneath that go to dot well known slash acme challenge and put its token files underneath there now so that'll work fine and i've done it that way but there is a there is a way you can do it that'll save you some trouble if you're going to be doing a lot of domains um, because every time you would do another domain, you'd have to come in and make that well-known Acme Challenge directory, change it to change it to Acme's ownership. If you get if you get if you forget to do that, it won't work. So there's another thing you can do to keep you from having to make that directory in every domain's space. And we'll come back to the Nginx config. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention at the beginning. Um, I'm doing this, I think I mentioned I'm doing this on a FreeBSD server. Um, the, the process on Linux is pretty much the same, except you know some of these commands will be different, but um, you might put you might put Acme's home in a different place or something, it doesn't matter. Um, the other thing is I'm using Nginx. Um, you can do this with Apache, you would just need to convert you know to Apache's config, because they are quite a bit different. So that's where this, so going back to what I was saying before, that's where this include comes in. We're going to include this acme.comp file that I have, which looks like this. All it is is an alias. So if anything comes in to this, you know, the steelfarm.com slash well-known acme challenge, it aliases it to this location on the server instead of under user local www steel farm and that way if i do more domains they can all alias to this same place under vardb acme which is acme's home directory and so it has ownership of that okay so we're going to restart nginx which i reload should be good enough but i'll just do a restart sometimes certain things i don't know I've had certain things when I reloaded when it comes to redirects and things like that. Certain things are, are seem like they're funky, but that could also be my browser. So when in doubt, a, a restart is fine since this isn't a, a server that matters. Um, okay, so I've got I've got that alias pointing in the right place now. And so I need to become Acme. And now I need to make that directory but I'll only need to do it this first time. Okay, so that's ready to go now. So now I can do magme.sh issue a certificate for these two domains. You can put whichever one you want first. It doesn't really matter. And then the www we'll give it vardb acme because that's where our well-known directory is that we wanted to use that acme has rights to write into okay 
and oh I didn't register yet I thought I did maybe I just talked about it you have to do this registration thing first okay So this is where it's connecting out to the server and saying, you know, here's here's my file that proves I control this these domains. It goes through each one. So you know, if you had eight domains with the same certificate, it would go through them one at a time and prove your ownership of each one. And now it's waiting for the server to send back the certificate. So sometimes this takes a little bit, generally not too long. Okay. So it's all done. There's our certificate, and here it tells you where everything is. The ones you care about are the full chain. That's your certificate that you can that that's your certificate and the chain certs that connect it up to uh, you know, whatever. Um, so you you need the full thing. This this one here, the steelfarm.com sir, is just your is just the certificate for that. For these domains without the chain certs that connected up to a, a, a major um, certificate authority so full chain has them all um, full chain is basically this one plus this one the intermediate CA okay and then you and then your key because your key is your private your, your private key is cryptographically tied to this certificates in some way and so your the server will use the private key to encrypt things going out and the browser will use the public key to encrypt things coming back in and so that's how you get two-way encryption it's just a, a pretty standard private you know public private key um, system all right so like i said we'll we'll save that so we've created our certificate, and if we go in, if we just want to look at it, we can do that. And it created it under the steelfarm.com. And so there we see some files. Um, if you want to look at it, it's OpenSSL, or no, it's, it's EC, I think. No, that's the key, sorry. X509, dash no out dash text dot in open SSL has some interesting options um, and then we'll pipe it to more okay so zero SSL is the certificate authority that that actually did the signing um, I guess that's what let's encrypt is called now I'm not sure or what they use um, there's the first domain I used um, You've got your your public key here. This is actually a hex representation of the key itself that gets passed back and forth and used to encrypt stuff. Um, down here it shows all the domains, so all under alternative name. Okay, but back at the top, the thing that probably is the most important is right here that this certificate is going to expire in three months so we're going to want to set this up to um, to keep it updated so we'll come back to that in a little bit but now that we've made it we can drop back to root and start setting up our config to actually use it so we want to listen um, So we're going to be setting this up to listen for, well, I don't need to copy everything. Um, okay, so server names is the same, root directory is the same, access logs is the same, all that good stuff. Um, and then I'm just going to copy a bunch of SSL stuff from another system, so... I don't have to wait for me to type it all. Uh, 
All right. So we put this stuff in the steelfarm.com. The steelfarm.com and the steelfarm.com. Okay, that should be the correct location for those. So you've got your SSL certificate and your SSL certificate key. Those are your and there whoops. Damn it. Okay. So I think that should be right. If it's not, we'll fix it. Because it'll it'll tell us. This stuff, there's a bunch of SSL stuff here that's just about making it more secure. Um, most of this isn't absolutely necessary, but I'll um, when we once we get it up, we'll check it out in SSL Labs and see that this is will give you a pretty high security score. All this extra stuff in here, um, especially cutting the protocols down to just 1.2, not using the earlier protocols. That's kind of a big deal. Um, this DH params DH param file. Um, is one that I created earlier because it takes, I don't know, I think it took a good 15 minutes to create it. It's a, it's a file that has a couple of really big prime numbers in it that are related somehow. And um, it takes a while to process it because it, it looks randomly for two prime numbers with a particular um, feature. And so it takes a while for it to do that. Um, so I just created it ahead of time. Um, and that should be its location. So, okay, that's everything there. Let's see what else I'm forgetting. Okay, I'm not going to do any PHP or anything like that. That's not really relevant to what we're doing here with SSL. But, you know, you would put in, if you did have any of that kind of stuff, PHP or. Um, PHP FPM or anything like that or any special locations you want to do or anything you know robots.tech stuff whatever you just put it all in there just like normal Nginx um, now back up here let's keep this down here too because we also want to redirect in that case now, generally, once you have SSL working, um, well, let's go ahead and see if it is working. We can test the config. It likes everything. Okay, come back here. And it likes it. It's locked. Goodness. It's secure, certificate. It's just, you know, pretty basic. It's good until August, August 5th. There's our three months. So, okay. So we know it's working. Now, generally, once you've got it working, you might as well go ahead and redirect port 80 to it. Um, I think some of the search engines prefer that. Um, they prefer to, they prefer for you to have um, port 80 redirected um, or to to be SSL only basically. So the way you do that is by taking out the root and the and the logs because you don't need any of that. That's all going to be handled by the by the 443 by the SSL server, and you just say return 301 HTTPS host request URI so that will just return a, return a 301 redirect which is a permanent redirect to the HTTPS for whatever you whatever you were coming to okay so we'll reload that again come back over here take out the HTTPA take out the S and it gets redirected right back to it okay so we're in good shape there all right, um, let's check out SSL Labs now. Ah, 
what I do. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. So we just type in our domain there. This takes a little while, so while that's working, I mentioned before it's going to expire in three months, so we've got to set up um, a cron job for it. Um, trying to think where I have one that's already set up so I can make sure I get it just right okay so let's go ahead and become Acme again could do this as root but it doesn't matter oh I already have it in here that's funny thought I del deleted everything okay so first of all in your cron if you're not familiar with cron it's just a way to schedule tasks I always like to put a mail to at the top um, especially if it's not roots cron because if you don't have a mail to then any results of any output is just going to get mailed to the user the owner of the cron task which is acme which means it's just going to go into acme's mailbox which isn't being sent anywhere special and i don't want to have to come in here and check acme's mailbox every day so i just mail it out to myself with the mail to at the top all right now this just says that 52 minutes after midnight every day it's going to run this now i don't want it to run every day there's no need for that this is um you know it's it's, it's just got to run within every you know every three months so i don't know when, when you run it with this cron option it doesn't rebuild the the certs every time it checks and sees how old they are and it doesn't rebuild them until they're a certain distance from expiring i'm not sure exactly what that difference is it might be like a month or something like that so what i'm going to do is just make this run once a week by putting that one right there that'll run it every monday so monday morning at 12 1250, it's going to run it and it's just going to run our copy of acme.sh with the dash dash cron and this home probably isn't isn't really necessary because that's what the default would be um dot acme.sh in the in the acme users directory but that's fine and i redirect the output to dev null just because i don't need to know what it's doing unless it has trouble so if, if it has any error output it'll mail that to me otherwise it, you know who cares um because more more often than not it's just going to be running and saying yeah, this doesn't need to be renewed yet okay so we'll save that and so there's our cron tab saved so now it'll run once a week and then once the domain is within a certain time of expiring it'll go ahead and renew it now the other thing about that is when it does renew it it's going to get a new copy it's going to get a new certificate but the web server isn't going to know about that so we've got to make sure that the web server um, gets reloaded once in a while and i already have that in here so what this is going to do is 15 minutes after and so i'm going to make that 15 minutes after one so that it'll definitely be after acme runs monday morning it just does a service nginx reload so as long as you know nginx is okay as long as my nginx config is okay that's fine um, i don't need to um you know, worry that that's going to break anything it's just going to do a reload okay and that is in roots cron tab because uh, acme doesn't have the rights to reload nginx i could do something with sudo um to let acme restart it but it's just as easy to just put something into roots cron tab um okay let's come back to cell labs and see how we're doing yeah we got an a plus so some of those if i look again at this some of those ssl things down here are why we're getting an a plus if you took some of these out it, you know it wouldn't get it that good a score but basically you know we've got this hsts long duration that's coming from this line right here this strict transport security line um 
we don't have DNS CAA. That's not some. That's not on the server itself. That's something. That's a record you can put in your DNS to basically say only zero SSL in our case is allowed to make certificates for this domain. Um, it's not a terribly important thing. That's why we're still getting an A plus because you know really you know who cares if somebody tries to make a certificate from another um, certificate authority they're not going to be able to because they don't have control of the server if they hacked into the server and got control of it, it we'd have bigger concerns than whether they can make a certificate um, got a couple of ciphers still that are considered weak so that could probably be more perfect but um, and then it's uh, for some reason they all every domain gets a gets a fatal on that I don't know why um, in every domain I've checked they have a they have an issue with the drown test so um, those aren't particular to uh, to this site those are just uh, issues that seem to always be there okay so we got a a plus there um, Trying to think if there's anything else I'm forgetting. We've already done the, we've already done the uh, redirect. Everything works. Come back here. One last check to make sure it all works. Yep. And so we've got our renewal set up to happen. And like I said, if it hits any trouble, it'll email that to me. So we should be good to go. So that's how you do it. That's how you set up acme.sh and use it to create a certificate for a domain and set that up to be renewed on a regular basis. So hope this was useful. Leave me any comments if you have any questions or if I missed anything. And thanks for watching.